Hey guys, um, obviously I am not wearing my Guildmaster Dan stuff. Uh, that's because I wanted to come to you guys today, not as, you know, Guildmaster Dan, but just as Dan. Um, I want to tell you about a little something that happened to me yesterday that, um, really I just kind of want to get out there and give my two cents on, uh, because it, yesterday I was very disgusted, um, and I got to see, you know, how, how people reacted to it, um, to what happened on Facebook, and, you know, fortunately I have some very level thinking, uh, friends that reminded me of, um, some of my own feelings on things, um, so yesterday, so, um, one of our neighbors, um, one of our new neighbors, uh, we hadn't seen for a while, like, they hadn't been around the house, we hadn't seen cars come and going, they had kids, um, and, like, dogs, so, um, it, it's really, it was really easy for us to tell that, you know, we hadn't seen them for at least two weeks, um, and yet, and two days ago now, I think Friday night, uh, we were, we were driving back from work, um, and, uh, I, I saw that in their yard, their bigger dog, cause they had like a little pug and then like a bigger, a bigger dog. Um, I, I saw him still chained to the house and looking kind of skinny. And I'm like, oh, to this point we were thinking that maybe they had moved, but, um, it was still in question cause they had left a bunch of stuff in the yard, like a big old trampoline, a car, um, trash and stuff. Like you know, maybe they went on vacation or what, but I saw the dog and I'm like, I stop and I ask, um, Guildmas, um, Guildmouse, um, does he look overly skinny to you? And, you know, she, she wasn't sure, and, you know, we, we kind of left it at that at first, but I decided to check it out, um, the next day, um, yesterday. Um, I went over there and, uh, like, knocked on the door, um, confirmed that nobody was home, um, and then went around the house and found the dog where I confirmed that, yes, indeed, he was still chained to the house, and that, uh, he was indeed malnourished, like, you know, that type of over skinny, uh, and our other neighbor, our next door neighbor actually came out, and, uh, he, he talked a little bit, um, to my wife, um, and told us that, you know, he works for the lady that owns that house, and as it turns out, these people, um, got evicted, and, uh, they, they took some of their stuff, their kids, the little, and the little dog, um, but left everything else, abandoned it. And they left this guy, um, chained to the house, um, by a three foot metal chain that was rusted up and not attached to a collar, but just wrapped around his neck, um, tightly enough that he couldn't get it off. Um, they left him with, um, no water or shelter. Um, he was, um, the only shelter that he found was a mud pit, um, that he could crawl into underneath the house that he'd found. Um, they left him food in the form of a bag of dog food, probably one of those big bags, dumped out onto the grass, um, which was no longer edible, um, because of the, uh, past couple of weeks of heavy rains and, uh, winter storms that came through, uh, and, uh, it, it had been reduced to mush, and this guy's, this guy's chain was, was so short and janky from being rusted that, you know, he was pretty much, he was living in the mud or his own feces because, you know, he didn't have enough room to pick a corner, um, and we took some pictures um, which I'm going to show you guys now. Um, this is, this is a dog that we found, um, in the state. We brought him some food, um, as soon as we figured out that nobody was there, um, and that he had indeed been abandoned three weeks ago, but, uh, th this is kind of how we found him. And, um, you know, we, we did the best we could for the guy. We, um, we can't take him in because we just got a new puppy. 
Um, and we don't know what this guy looks like medically. You know, we, we don't know how well that these folks took care of him. So we don't know if, you know, he has, has his shots or anything like that. Um, so we don't think it's safe to bring him around our brand new puppy, you know, Alphaba that you've seen on the channel a few times now. And, but we still did our best for him. Um, we went and got him a new collar, um, a 12 foot lead. Uh, we brought him, um, some fresh food and we did it again today. We, uh, uh, fresh water. Um, we set up a, we set up, uh, um, a, a, a pallet in, in the mud with some cardboard on it for him to lay on if he goes down there. But he seems to like a mattress that we found on the property, uh, even more, which we had pulled over and we pulled the giant, um, trampoline over it to give him, you know, some form of shelter, uh, which, um, I got a picture of that too, so you guys can kind of see what we did for him, um, take a look at it here, and so, you know, we, we did the best we could for him for at the moment, we've already called the authorities, our, our local police can't do anything, um, because they don't have the resources or, or a facility for animal control, even though they say that, you know, they, they deal with this stuff a lot. And, um, and, uh, um, so we called, you know, we contacted Habitat for Humanity, uh, the nearest one and the nearest animal control, but they were both closed because it's the weekend. Um, so we're waiting to hear back from on Monday. Um, so, but from what we've discussed with our neighbors, it sounds like there's, we're, it's almost like we're in like a, a a blackout area for animal control. Like the county doesn't do anything, the the city can't do anything, and like the nearest towns are actually in a different county, um, so um, they might not be able to do anything either. Um, we're not gonna give up. Um, I mean, obviously, I haven't talked to him yet because it's not Monday yet, but uh, we're not gonna give up. We're gonna we're gonna keep this guy, you know you know, fed and watered and, and at least for the most part out of the, um, out of the elements, uh, you know, we're going to do the best we can for him until we can get him help. And the reason why I want to tell you guys about this was, um, kind of, kind of make, kind of to make you aware that this sort of thing happens. Um, and I, I know I've said before, you know, that, that, you know, there are always jerks out there and, uh, that was kind of the general reaction on Facebook when I, I posted my, indig my indignation to the way I found this dog. A lot of people started saying, you know, uh, these people were, are, were terrible, that, you know, they, they could take their kids and the other dog, but they couldn't, they, you know, they had to leave this dog chained to the house, that, you know, they deserved, you know, to be treated the same way, that, uh, you know, they should be attacked, that, you know, um, the police can't really do a lot that they deserve, you know, um, eye for an eye justice, that sort of stuff. And, uh, I, I, and I certainly could understand. I was certainly mad seeing how, um, this dog was treated. I mean, they couldn't even, I mean, they didn't even let him loose when they abandoned him so that he can go scavenge for food. They left him chained to a house and further, they left him chained to a house behind a corner where he couldn't be seen by other houses. Um, I was only able to see him because I was coming down the road in the right way. And, uh, <sighs> so I wasn't happy, um, with how they'd left him with these people. Um, and one of my friends, um, made a good point. Um, cause I, I, I've posted on Facebook before, um, kind of just talking a little bit about what I think about shaming people. Um, you know, whether they, you know, who deserves to be shamed and what they deserve to be shamed for, or, and, you know, if that is even an actual thing, do, um, how do, like, is shaming a positive, um, a positive thing? You know, I, I've talked about that sort of stuff before, and they brought up the good point that, um, you know, they weren't condoning these people's actions. They were saying that, in fact, they agreed that, you know, the way this dog was treated was deplorable. But they brought up the good point that, you know, these people, um, you know, you don't get evicted because everything's going right. You know, it sounded like these people were in a bad situation where they could be living out of a car right now with their kids and their little dog. 
um, that, you know, they did the best that they could for this dog. Now, um, my feeling to that is, well, the fact is that I, I, it reminded me that, you know, these people are human beings. They're not just, they're not, they're not just demons that go around punching dogs. Now, there are people out there like that. There are people out there that legitimately mistreat, um, that are, uh, that are malefic, that are maleficent, yes, that are, um, that are uh, malicious and um, mistreat other people and dog or other people and animals and things um, for whatever reasons. But uh, the point being, she reminded me that um, these people are people that what they did to this dog, what they did to this dog at best was grossly irresponsible. At worst, it was cruel. Um, but I bring it up because what happened to this dog was deplorable. And it made me disgusted. Um, but it also made... But my friend's comment also made me, you know, think on my own view... My own thoughts on this sort of thing. How... Where... I, and I've read the stories where somebody uh, did something wrong. Like they made a racist comment or something. And the internet found out about it and ran away with it and destroyed this person's life where they have to live for the most part in anonymity in order to just get a job. Um, and just for having made a joke in poor taste. And, you know, thinking about how people were reacting uh, about these people to this, you know, made me think that it would be real easy to take um, this, poor, this admittedly very poor decision on their part. Um, and how they could run away with this and, um, just how, how easy it would be for the internet as soon as they get their information to run away with it and destroy their lives like they've done, like it's done to other, to, you know, some other people. Um, and like I said, that's where the whole do they deserve it sort of thing comes in or they, do they deserve that level of, uh, repercussion and really, what I want you guys to get out of this, um, just bringing up this whole thing, is that this stuff happens. You know, I, I hope that, especially since these folks have kids, I I hope all I would want is for them to understand how bad they fucked up, and that how irresponsible their decisions were, and ha how what and and why what they did was wrong. Um. I wouldn't want them hurt. I wouldn't want them put in the same situation. I don't want anyone in that situation. Um, I just want them to understand, and especially their kids. The fact that they have kids, I, 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 you know, I pray that they understand that that they understand, even if it's just someday, that what what their what happened to that dog was wrong, um, and that they don't do it again. To you know do it to someone else or yeah someone else um but what i want you guys to get out of is that this was wrong and when you come across stuff like this when you see it you got to do what you can to help um it happens because there's a, there's always jerks out there and there's people out there that make really shitty decisions um those people aren't always devils sometimes they just make really bad decisions um, and you just got to do what you can for the, or, you know, for it. When you come across a dog like this, help him out because if you don't, he's going to die. Uh, he's lucky that we found him when we, before he died. Um, <sighs> you got to do what you can when you come across stuff like this. You know, you, you got to be. You can't expect someone else to take care of it. You have to be the person who does something. Because more often than not, nobody will do anything. Because they keep waiting for the next person to do it. You have to help when you can. And when you come across stuff like this where someone's made, when, where someone has done something wrong, you have, you have to be, you have to be a responsible person and think about you know, whether it was a bad decision 
or whether they were actually being malicious. And now, there are malicious people out there. There are people out there who get off on hurting other people. Um, and I'm not even saying in the in the fantasy way, it, like inside of um, BDSM. I mean, there are people out there that legit, they get off on hurting other people. And not in a fantasy, in real life, that they actually go out of their way to screw other people over, and that makes them feel good. Those people exist. But a lot of people out there just make bad decisions. And I think it, as responsible, intelligent people, when we come across this scenario, on top of doing what we can to help the person who suffered, or the animal that has suffered in this case, it, it's on us to think about you know, whether this was a bad decision or whether this person was legitimately being malicious. Um, if they were being malicious, then they do deserve repercussion. Um, and it's up to us, again, as respons responsible, um, intelligent people to think about what is an appropriate repercussion. Um, it's really, and trust me, I even said this to my friend, it's really hard to feel empathy when you're dealing when you are facing the consequences of someone else's poor decisions. But I feel that it, it is my responsibility as an intelligent, responsible person to weigh those things and not let myself get carried away. Um, so that's what I want you guys to take away from this is when you come, these sorts of things happen and it's real tragic. And it's even worse the fact that, you know, this, this sort of stuff happens to human beings as well, and far worse. You just got to remember that if you come across this stuff, you have to do something. You, ha you, you have to do what you can, because if you don't, no one will. Um, those stories of the people that you hear where, you know, they did something heroic or they did something kind, that's because they realized that they had to do something or no one else would. <sighs> so you have to be that person when you come across stuff like this. And then you have to be responsible. And remember that some people make poor decisions and aren't necessarily evil. So you have to consider that and not let yourself get carried away. And... That's that's kind of it for my PSA for today, guys. Um, I just wanted to talk to you a bit about that. And uh, I certainly hope that you don't ever come across this stuff. That Because if none of us ever do come across this stuff, if, if no one ever came across this stuff, that means it's not happening. Um, but it does happen. And some of you will come across this stuff. And I just, ho and I just hope that you'll remember what I said that you got to do something you got to do what you can you don't have to like solve the scenario but you got to help you have to do what you can because no one else will all right guys that's enough for today um uh, i'll see you next week um where hopefully things won't be as as down for you but that's it for today um remember what i said <laughs>